Hello, my quilting friends. Welcome to episode 28 of the podcast. My name is Leah Day, and today I'm interviewing a quilting friend, Jennifer Farsh. She is a quilting hobbyist. She makes quilts for fun, uh, is raising her family in South Carolina, and comments on almost every single video and post I put up on Facebook and my blog. So, how I know Jennifer is really, really simple. We've interacted together for mo many months online. And this is one of those things, like real relationships can be built on an online interaction like this. And it's really wonderful to know that I'm going to get that friendly message every day. And that makes my day, honestly. And when I start to recognize someone's name over and over and over again, it does build a connection. And uh, Jennifer reached out to me a few weeks ago and she had a suggestion for someone to be on the show. And that was Margaret Lewin, which you can appreciate her uh, episode from last week. So whenever Jennifer mentioned this, I was like, wait a minute, that's that Jennifer Farsh that is always commenting so nicely on my videos and who I've interacted with several times now. And I was like, well, why don't you be on the show too? And, uh, and I think that was a little scary <laughs> for Jennifer, but that's okay. She did a great job. And I had a really fun time chatting with her. Um, I don't know, something about it. I, I felt like um, we shared more. Uh, and I certainly went to a more personal level than I usually do. Uh, you know, a lot of times when I'm talking to someone about business, we kind of keep things really light and fluffy about business. And, you know, it's just, it's something very different when you're talking to someone who makes quilts uh, for the transformational aspect of it, you know, for the side of your life that is seeking something more and, and seeking to fulfill that creative desire. And so... I thoroughly enjoyed this interview. I love talking with Jennifer, getting to know her better. And only after the interview did I realize that we actually live fairly close together. So we'll probably meet for breakfast sometime soon. Um, so never discount the power of saying something nice online. You never know that might turn into a real life in-person relationship. But even if it doesn't, even if Jennifer lived halfway across the country, um, I feel like I really know her so much better and am connected with her and I consider her a friend. Um, so I just want to encourage you that if you ever feel like you're not being heard or that your comment is just going to go out into the ether and not matter to the person that you're commenting to, question that belief because even, even the smallest thing can make a big impact over time. So as for the updates around the house, I'm here in the crafty cottage and it is a junky mess. <laughs> and uh, if you're listening to the audio, um, please know that there is also a YouTube version, a video version, so you can see me playing around here in the crafty cottage trying to clean up. So basically, um, I have been completely dog out busy for many, many weeks. And because of that, I have let the crafty cottage just kind of really get junky. I mean, and this is this is high level bad <laughs> in my opinion. So I've decided it's finally time to clean out and clear out and I'm going to make some decisions that, you know, about getting rid of some stuff and taking a lot of stuff back inside. Uh, and it's just time to clean up. And really, honestly, um, another kind of exciting thing. I finished the last of my quilt photography yesterday for the book. I shot the last picture. Now I still need to go in and edit a lot. There's a lot that needs to be edited, but shooting that last picture really feels like that's kind of wrapping up. I might have to do a few more shots here and there, but no more like whole days of shooting photos, you know, or, or messing around with that. So that feels amazing. So now it kind of feels like I want to reset and clean up and clear out and just kind of go back to square one and have those few days of just kind of, I don't know, um, peaceful and, and stillness, like peacefulness and stillness. I don't know. Uh, I just feel like I need that before I rush right into something else. And then also I cannot stand it when it gets <laughs> messy. <laughs> I mean, I'm generally the clutter person in the house. Like, you know, of the two of us, Josh keeps his area so nice and tidy. And I don't know how he does it. Like his desk never has stuff on it ever. Like 
It's a glass desk, so you can always see through it. You can always see the, the uh, keyboard. You can always see everything on his desk. And it's just the desk. And it's not like five million layers of paper and books and all this other stuff. And I have multiple desks and they are always, <laughs> always covered in junk. So I'd say, I guess it's just the difference between how we work. Um, the busier I am, the junkier I get. And uh, certainly whenever I get into the throes of a project like I've been working on, you know, there's just not enough time to stop everything and clean up. Now, if I had a better habit of like, you know, cleaning up daily, you know, maybe at the end of every day I'd stop and straighten up. And then it's just not, it's just not who I am. I'm, I'm a real clutter bug. It's just... It's just how it goes. Um, so, you know, now today I'm just taking the time to go through it. I have kind of piled up everything. You're gonna hear me clattering around a little bit on the audio, I'm sorry about that. But um, it's just gotten so junky that I'm knocking things over. And really, you know, I, I've also kind of left some stuff out here that really didn't need to be out here. Like I'm looking at a whole lot, like this is a, a handmade box and it's the Suffolk Shaker Shop. I love this thing. This is a wooden oval bowl with a uh, handle and all of this is made out of wood. So it has been um, very carefully uh, curved to into the oval shape. And I mean, it's very, very finely finished. Uh, and it's kind of a um, burl cherry, I think. So really beautiful. And it holds all of the parts and feet to my Juki machine. So I still have the Juki F600, but I'm not quilting on it right this second. And I've just left all this junk out here and I don't need it. I don't need it out here at all. It's the machine is inside the house. So it needs to all go inside the house too. So I'm just pulling out the few tools that I might end up using out here again. You know, you know, I'm always, I always need multiple screwdrivers out here. For some reason, I'm always misplacing my screwdrivers, but that looks good. I think I've got, I think I've got everything I need. I can take all that back inside. So it's like little things like that where I will not take something inside for a while and then it'll just keep piling up, piling up, piling up. I had this whole pile, like literally a Tupperware, large Tupperware container of thread where I brought out a spool, you know, to stitch something or to quilt something on video to have something colorful. And then I just left it out here and then I did it again and again and again. <laughs> Until I had, I had probably had 25 spools of isocord in various colors. Of course, not any in white, the color that I use most often. Uh, so it's it's little funny things like that um, that I find that I really need to regularly clean up more often. And uh, and I I don't know. I think that this is just who I am. When I was a little girl, I was a lot like this where my bed would get really, really junky and everyone would be like, go clean your room, go clean up your bed, you know, that kind of thing. And I'd let it get like really funky and gross and then finally go and clean it all up. And then it was like, ah, it's done now, you know? So maybe I got that kind of programmed into my system that I like, I like the junk and the hoard. And then I like the, ah, Oh, it's so nice. And then but the funny thing about it is I usually will go overboard, like it all must go empty, like totally trash everything. And then within six months, I've usually either bought the thing again or uh, somehow ended up with it again. And that's just, that's just the way I roll. You know, the funny thing about, I have all, I have this stand with all of my necklaces on it. And I've had this out here for a little while and I love the stand and I love seeing my necklaces. It just, it's so cheerful. It makes me smile, but I'm not wearing any of them. And a large reason why, especially in the summertime, wearing a necklace when it's really hot in here, it's, it feels like I'm strangling. So I think I'm gonna save my pearls and I think the rest of these are gonna go inside and then I'll eliminate that whole thing out of here. So interesting thing about the pearls, when I was a kid and got into beadwork, I was totally not into pearls at all. In fact, actually, I just thought they were like the height of not cool. <laughs> well, of course, as I've matured and gotten older, I now see pearls as really beautiful, elegant jewelry. And of course they also can accrue in value, which is something I'm also interested in. So it, it's kind of, I don't know, because I've been crafting for so long 
and been making things for so long, uh, it's been interesting to observe how my brain has changed on certain things and my, my opinion has changed over the years. And I'm always intrigued by that, you know, to see how things are going. And, and I also allow and embrace that change because that's one of those things. If you stop yourself, like, oh no, wait a minute, I'm not allowed to like pearls. I'm not, I'm not supposed to like pearls because I didn't like pearls when I was 17. <laughs> So I shouldn't like pearls now that I'm 33, you know, um, as silly as that is, that is sometimes the mentality that people can have and, and kind of get stuck that way. So it's uh, something interesting that I've observed is that sometimes almost overnight I can go from hating a certain craft or a certain look or something like that. And then all of a sudden loving it and just allow that flow. I'm like, okay, cool. This is where we're going now. You know, that's awesome. Uh, so I, I have managed, yay, to clean up and now I can actually see my drawer, which is so great. I really love the cleaning up thing. As you can tell, I, it, I don't know, there's something about this is energizing me right now. So I feel like I can see the bottom of the drawer and so now I can shove everything back in it <laughs> and clean off the counter and then I'll be able to make something new and that'll be awesome. So. That's it for the intro this week. Our sponsor for the week is leahday.com, my website, where you will find tools, supplies, books, and video workshops to guide you through many steps of quilting. So one workshop in particular you might be interested in is quilting a king on your home machine. Basically, I made a king size quilt and I really quilted it on a small machine and it turned out great. I love it. I use it on my bed every single day. And so I'd really want to prove to you that yes, indeed, you can quilt huge quilts on your home machine too. So check out that workshop at leahday.com king. And now let's get on to the interview with Jennifer Farsh. Hello, my quilting friends. Today, I'm here with Jennifer Farsh. Welcome to the show, Jennifer. Hi, Leah. Welcome. Thank you for having me on. Now, a little introduction. Jennifer is one of my online quilting friends. We've never met in person. This is the first time I'm seeing her here on Skype, but I see her comments almost every day on YouTube and Facebook. Jennifer is a hobby quilter, so she doesn't have a website or a blog, and she's learned how to qu make quilts by learning online. So thank you so much for joining me today, Jennifer. So great to be here. Now, I know it's a little scary to be on the podcast, and we emailed back and forth a bit about that So when I asked you to be on the show. So you want to talk a little bit about that and, you know, how you're feeling today? <laughs> Number one, Leah Day sent me an email and said, would you like to be interviewed on my podcast? Hello. <laughs> hey. Um, she's my quilting goddess. <laughs> and I, um, I have such a strong feeling about her because it's, it's an emotional feeling, an emotional connection because she, she has taken me out of a dark spot, just giving me an outlet and um, to be interviewed was just such a big deal. It just it was a really big deal. I was worried about what I would say. What is just a quilter? What do I have to contribute to the conversation? But she emailed me back and was encouraging and uh, said, "We're going to do this. It's going to be great." So here I am. Yes, and it's we're going to have such a good time, you know. And it, you know, it is we kind are. of yeah. So um, let's talk about quilting <laughs> real quick. Uh, what's on your sewing yeah. machine right now? What's on my machine? Okay, well, of course, I'm working on the machine quilting block party this year. It's my first year. I've I've watched it be built, but this is my first year participating, and it's a blast. And the Facebook group is amazing, and everybody's encouraging, and I'm having a super great time on that. And of course, as a quilter, I have several projects <laughs> going. Um, I also just finished a um, peacock panel. It was a timeless treasures. Um, panel and uh, another girl on your Leah Day quilting Facebook page had posted one and I, we were just all blown away so of course I ordered it and uh, so I just finished free motion quilting that. and my third project is I'm doing a sort of a love yourself journal and I, um, I you know thoughts come into my 
mind of, you know, love yourself or today's going to be a great day or positive, you know. And so then I'll go down to my machine and I will quilt out that saying and do some fun little swirls around it. And so it's a way for me to practice my free motion quilting and get myself, you know, into the positive mode for, for the day. Yeah. I so love that's that. So is that, some, <laughs> is that a, like a project being led by somebody else that you're following Thank along you. with? No, um, actually, this was because of you, and you um, have always been open and honest about where you are um, emotionally and just the struggle with, you know, feeling good about yourself and feeling good that you have something to offer the world, that you are worthy, is what your phrase was, and you had taken, I think it was you painted something respect yourself or something you wrote and that just really stayed with me and I thought oh, what a powerful thing the music was going and you were just like yes I'm in control and I'm going to take possession of my life and I'm going to love it and uh, that just inspired me so one day I, I got home I put a real quick cold sandwich together and I just wrote really bold love yourself and that was day one and then day two, another saying came to myself, and I have it actually right here, and it was, happiness is my choice. And I wrote that out, and I put a big tree around it. And then it was, um, um, I love me, I know my strength, I hold my value, I love my precious self. And I drew a little picture of me with hair. <laughs> <laughs> That's and it's all, it's just free motion. I didn't draw it out ahead of time, I just started doing it. And I'm telling you, it was so powerful afterwards to walk away and be like wow you know I'm that is my saying for the day and I'm gonna live it and my 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 youngest who's still at home said mom you're you're just your attitude is changing you're you're healthier in your mind and your your outlook has changed in life so yeah it's a very powerful thing to write these sayings out and own them absolutely yeah, yeah stitching it out too like uh, I deal with depression and so, you know, I'll go through like a funky phase and just feel like everything I've done is crap and, not, you know, I don't matter and, and all that kind of stuff just kind of starts to circle around. But it's like you connect with the stitching and make something pretty. It's like I might feel totally terrible, but if I can make something pretty, then it makes everything better, you know? And I love it your is. affirmations. It is. Positive. I remember you said one time um, in one of your tutorials, <laughs> I've watched them all, um, that you were stitching something out that sort of had a, a negative feeling to you and a negative saying, and you just had to throw it away and tear it up. And I was like, yeah, so I'm going to focus on the good. I'm going to focus on, you know, we all, it's, it's down in the dumps as we are, we get, there's something in us that's good. There's something of value and you have to pull that up and you have to own it and you have to live it and it really just has completely changed my life this stitching <laughs> absolutely yeah and you know that that quilt was sinkhole and I ended up actually catching it on fire <laughs> I took it outside that's and awesome. <laughs> threw some kerosene on it and burned it overnight yeah, yeah. so Good it's one you. of those things Good that I found you. like when you start digging sometimes it's like you just have to find a point where it's like, if I keep digging, all I'm going to find is pain. And all I'm going to find is all the all the things that are holding me back and standing in my way. And most of it is just all in our head. It's not reality. And, uh, it is. and, and it then is. letting it all go. <laughs> like the frozen letting song. Letting it go. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So um, have you ever thought about sharing that online, like sharing some pictures, maybe sharing that in a blog? Or is that kind of, does it feel a little bit too personal right now? Yeah, I had gone through some really like tough um, rejection from family. And um, I ended up moving down to South Carolina from Michigan. And when I got here, I was sort of like, this is my haven. This home is my haven. It's safe. I have my kids surrounding my husband. And um, I sort of, in my mind, put up a wall around myself. And I didn't reach out, didn't try to make friends. I just, I locked myself in this safe little hole, and I thought that was it. And, um, yeah, so that, just putting myself out there. And I see, you know, it's amazing. I love when women can do that and put themselves out there. But sometimes the comments, I think that would just eat me alive <laughs> if someone said something mean. <laughs> But yeah, I think, you know, maybe, maybe one day I will. 
Yeah, it's, it requires a level of bravery. It certainly does. And there are times, like, uh, kind of whatever I'm going through right now, sometimes it's too personal. And, it, and it's too, it, it would hit too close to home to get somebody else's opinion about it until I get my brain wrapped around it. And so it's kind of like I, I am ready to share after I've figured it out and kind of gone through that. And I've, and I've learned, you know, there have been times that I posted and I've been very angry. And it, of course, came out that way because I was angry. <laughs> and then, <laughs> yeah, I get a lot of angry people reacting. <laughs> so it's a learning experience. It really, right. it really is. And there are times where I'm like, um, I just need to figure this out before I share about it. And, uh, and, and that's been good, too, is realizing that it doesn't all have to be public. Uh, I once did a lecture and shared my goddess quilts. And this was, um, this was a couple years ago. And my goddess quilt series is very personal and, and has a lot of stuff, you know, uh, a lot of issues with my past. There's a lot of things that I work through, and I'm very open about all of it. And someone at the lecture raised her hand. She's like, is there anything you don't share? <laughs> so, <laughs> I was like, well, you know, there is actually a lot that I don't. Uh, and you don't know about it, you know. Um, but And I think that we all have to find that balance, certainly. Uh, and and I, and I think that's really what it's all about. And you're right. You know, there are there are negative comments and people can be mean and stuff. And I have to say thank you so much for offering up a bit of kindness almost every single day I get on YouTube or on Facebook and there's a sweet Jennifer Barsh comment. I'm like, oh, Jennifer, thank you. I absolutely love to give positive feedback and positive. I want to put positive positivity out there, right? I want these people that have never made a quote before and are just starting to feel good about it. That, you know, we're, yes. we're on a team, really. We're all in this together. And it's important that we encourage each other. Absolutely. So talking about excitement, what are you excited about learning next? Like, what's your, what's your next thing on the agenda? Well, that's a great question. I just ordered these paints that um, I had seen online, you know, just people but doing art quilts and painting with this kind of um, shimmery paint. So oh, yeah. that I'm kind of excited to experiment with paint on quilts, right? And um, I would love to learn how to do intricate paper piecing. Like that would be super fun. So yeah, so those are kind of the two things that I'm looking at right now. Excellent. And you've been learning online and I know probably not just for me, where are some other places that you've been learning how to quilt? Okay, so when I first um, I learned to sew about two years ago, I took a sewing class and the, and I made a um, couch cover, one of those uh, drop cloth, um, painter's drop cloth couch cover, and that was sort of my thing. I really wanted to, that's why I took a sewing class, and then after that, I was like, okay, that was a big project. I need another big, because I can't go small. So I wanted to learn to make a quilt, and I searched online, and I think... Uh, Crafty Gemini was the first person that I found, and I learned to, to, to piece a quilt, and then I had this quilt, and I now quilt it. Well, it's quilt as desired. I was like, what is desired? <laughs> so searched as desired, and Leah Day popped up, and then that's how I, um, I learned to quilt. Excellent. That's wonderful. And learning online, have you ever gotten anyone like, oh my gosh, that's where you learn? Have you ever gotten a negative reaction to that? I joined my first quilt, uh, it's not a guild, it's a club, um, recently, and all the ladies were talking about taking the classes at the quilt guild, and um, the sewing bees, and all of these, I was like, what is this all this happening? Because I've never purchased a book, I've never walked into a quilt shop, and I just thought everybody learned online, so they were just shocked, they, they were interested to see where I got my information, and how I I show a quilt. Oh, in the world, did you make this quilt on your own in your house with never leaving? It's like, well, you know, online, there's so many great resources online and so many great teachers. It's at your pace. It's on your time. Um, it's the convenience of always being home and learning this amazing skill. 
Absolutely. I completely agree. And, you know, too, it's like, don't have to leave the house. I don't have to pull out my machine. You know, by the time I get all my gear packed up, I'm like, I'm already exhausted. I need to wait a week in order to go to the class. Yes, that is so foreign to me that they say, well, bring your machine to this bee. And I was like, gosh, that's such a big deal. It's like, it's set in a table. How am I going to get it out and drag it over there? And what about all my equipment? (laughs) Sometimes I'm so lazy. I'm like, I don't feel like changing the bobbin. So I'm not going to work on that quilt right now. (laughs) (laughs) Right. I get the the advantage of having a teacher in my, come to my home online all the time. And I have these communities out there where you can share your work, get feedback. Any question is answered, you know, because the world never sleeps. There's someone, someone awake. Um, and I love that. I love that. So, yeah. Absolutely. So what's the hardest thing that you've learned that you feel like was like the toughest thing to master so far? The toughest thing for me, I think at the very beginning was matching points you know, having those points come out. I just couldn't wrap my head around how they did it. And, and the quarter inch was so elusive to me. It did not, it did not get it. Yeah. So once I've mastered those two things, I felt like I can do anything. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah. And it's such a building process too. Like for me, it was basting. Like, oh my gosh, how do you get the whole quilt flat and pin it together like that? Whew, I couldn't even, I couldn't even come close to wrapping my brain around it. So I, my first quilts were like, in pieces they I was quilting as you go from the very beginning because I just could not wrap my oh, brain around wow. basting yeah it's like I'm not gonna have a whole quilt top and then not know what to do with it so it's so funny the things that are like <laughs> that's just too hard <laughs> yeah exactly exactly so is there anything you sound so upbeat and so enthusiastic about quilting is there anything that's scary to you Yeah. Okay. Just heads up for those listening. She did give me this question ahead of time. So I did prepare for what, because at first I was like, terrifying. No, there's no, and then I thought and I thought and I thought, and one thing does terrify me. I went on a shop hop for the, the, the South Carolina, you know, the quilt shops, you, you go shop to shop. And one shop I went to was in a, 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 an advanced quilter who had been doing it for years and years and years and of course had many many quilts and I went to use her restroom and in the bathroom was this uh, um, quilt case it was beautiful it was made out of wood and it was glass and it had just a million quilts folded in it that to me is my biggest fear is to end up with (laughs) so many quilts that I have to put them in the bathroom (laughs) that is kind of scary actually I don't have a I don't have a big house, but I've seen those hoarding shows, and I know lots of quilts would really scare me. <laughs> yeah, so finding a home for the things that I make is a top priority, and I um, and I hope that my kids want them because they're getting them. Absolutely. I think they each have at least three. <laughs> Uh, that's, yeah, you know, and, you know, that was one thing I was just recently talking to another uh, quilter about, and so she started putting quilts on her table as a tablecloth. Love it. So Love eat, on, eat on them. I mean, why not? You know, uh, spread why them all not? over the house. <laughs> yeah, that is certainly, I have to say. Yeah, there has to be. Yeah, I have to say, 10 years in, I have a closet filled. Uh, and I... getting to the point where it's like, all right, let's start making some smaller ones. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, I love it. So, what do you think it is uh, that makes you want to create and make stuff because there is a whole group of people out there that go to work come home watch television so what (gasps) is it that sets us apart that makes us do this (laughs) I I think from the from the time I can remember I always like to make things and um when I moved down here to South Carolina my biggest thing was I want chickens so um I had never built a building before, but I'm pretty handy. I can do things. So I built a chicken coop and then I was like, well, that was fun. And then I, and then I went online and I found these pallet barns. I built a, it's huge, (laughs) a pallet barn. So I have this thing in me where I just want to make and I want to create. Well, I don't have a whole lot of room left in the backyard because I built so many buildings. (laughs) Um, so I was like, let's take this inside and see what I can do. And I don't know. Quilting is just, it's never ending. You could just, you could study it for 20 years and still there's this whole new 
technique you've never done before. So to me, it's a bit of a, it's a challenge. It's a puzzle. Um, it's, it's, and it's, it's part of something bigger. It's these women that have been doing this for years and years and years, and now I'm part of it. So I feel like I'm in this exclusive club and it's really cool. And making and creating is just, it's second nature for me. I love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I felt like there's so many facets to quilting, like just making traditional quilts has so many techniques and little things to learn. And then you start blowing out into art techniques and it's like paint and glitter yeah. and threads. It's like, oh man, I could spend years yes. just playing with that. It's never ending. Exactly. We could just do this forever. <laughs> <laughs> I did beadwork for eight years when I was in high school. I uh, started in middle school and into high school, worked at a bead shop, and it always felt um, small. You know, like there are only so many necklaces that you can make, and it's always limited by the beads you've got, you know, and, and it was, and it, I was trying to do stuff with bead work that turned out I really wanted to be doing with fabric. And so when I got into quilting, it was finally like, ah, oh, here it is. This is what I've been wanting to do this whole time. So have you ever encountered like something where you're like, oh, I'm not allowed to do that. Have you ever encountered that kind of resistance and like, oh, that's not the rules? Because I learned from you, <laughs> I I really push back when someone says you can't do that. I really do. I don't, um, oh, you, you have to use this kind of cotton or you have to use this kind of machine. Or My first quilt was on like I, $60 um, it was new, but it was a $60 machine and the quilt is amazing. So then when someone was saying, well, you need to have a, a machine that's, you know, top of the line, or you need to go to a quilt shop to buy that. I mean, no, no, no way. And if someone says they want to cut up their, their kids, uh, jeans and make a jean quilt, go for it. If it's your quilt and, um, the rules and regulations really and truly when someone says I can't, then I, I'm going to turn around and do I'm going to do exactly what they said I can't do. I've been told you can't use sheets from backing. Oh, will you watch me? <laughs> I'll use sheets if I want to. Yeah, so I think rules are, I don't listen to them. I think it's your, it's a creative thing. It's yours and, you know, it's for you. Now, if you were doing it for a show, I can see where, okay, you really need to have the top of the line fabric and the top of the line everything. But if you're just making it for home and for love and, you know, I want my quilts to be worn and used and dragged all over the place. So, yeah, rules, rules. Exactly. Don't do them. <laughs> exactly. I still haven't figured out the whole sheet thing. I mean, I've done some research and it's 100% cotton fabric. So why not? I think that's a carryover from hand quilting. Well, There's so many things like that are carried over from hand quilting, like a judgment, like, oh, well, it's hard to stick the needle through. Well, guess what? I quilt on a machine. That doesn't exactly matter anymore. So, <laughs> yeah. And, oh, yeah. I say, look, and if you're, you know, it's it can be quite expensive, the hobby. And if, and if you're on a budget and you really want to make a quilt, and if that's what's holding you back is, okay, I can't afford, no, then don't. Then don't spend a ton of money on fabric. Don't spend a ton of money on the top of the line sewing machine. Use what you have and enjoy it and create. That's all it is. To me, it's just fun. Exactly. And let's talk about that a little bit because this is something that I think kind of can get lost most, you know, most podcasts are talking, you know, an industry professional to another professional quilter and stuff. And we're just, you know, chatting about, you know, making money with quilting. And so often we lose the conversation with an actual real life hobby quilter who is has to shell out the cash. And then it's <laughs> not a business write off, you know, it's not a business write off right. for you to buy fabric and stuff. So tell me about that. Was that a limitation when you first got into quilting? And how did you work around it? Okay, yeah, when I first started and I um, went to, a, I think I went to a big box store to buy fabric, I, I couldn't believe, and, for, and that was the cheaper end, I didn't realize, so I just went to the, the cheapest to the cheapest cottons I could find, which were the solids, um, and then I went and I bought the cheapest machine I could find, because at first I didn't know, is this is it just going to be a one quilt and then move on thing, because I do tend to move on from projects, Um this is going to be something I really, really, really get into. So I think it's okay to buy the low end machine and get started. It's okay to buy the solids that are a little bit cheaper to get started or any other fabrics you have lying around the house. It's all good. It's all good. 
Um, so the cost at first was sort of pulling me back. Now I will eat beans and rice so I can buy <laughs> my quilting tools and fabric. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, it, it is a factor. It is a factor for a lot of people. And I, and I, realistically, we're not going to sell the quilts for what we've put into them. So it's a labor of love. It's a hobby. Um, and you know, you just, you just hope that you make something beautiful enough that it wants to, wants to live on with the people that you love. So, yeah. Absolutely. And you mentioned selling. Have you had any interest in selling a quilt that you've made? Oh, every other person says, well, put your quilt, people who don't quilt, put your quilt on Etsy. You will make a million dollars. No, I don't think, um, I don't know if I would ever get back the time, the energy, the money, the everything that I put into it. So for me, it is, it's just a, it's a huge piece of love that I put together and I want someone I love to have it. And I, and if someone offered me for what, what I put into it, yeah, sure. I, I'd, I'd take the money, but I don't see that happening. And I'm not actively seeking people to, to buy it because I think the stress of bargaining with someone over something like this would be too much. It would yeah. just be too much for me. So I'd rather give it. Yeah, that's that's the way it is to me. If I make a quilt, you know, it is a gift freely given, or it's a million dollars. You know, it's like yeah, yeah it's it's, it, it's, it's kind of like there's uh, no in between. Yeah, it's kind of like Thanksgiving dinner. Like if someone pulled out their wallet and wanted to pay you for Thanksgiving dinner, it would be insulting. You know, no matter. Oh, that is a really that is a really good way of looking. That is exactly what it is. It is a free yeah. meal. <laughs> exactly yeah and, and it's like I love it, it is an expression of love I am giving this to you because I love you and I want to wrap you in my arms and my might not be able to do that so here's this beautiful quilt in place of that uh, exactly. and so it's always a gift freely given or it is uh you know I'm gonna charge what it's worth you know mm -hmm. to me and I pretty much for that reason I don't sell quilts you know? yeah and, yeah. and it's not as something that I'm, I'm even, I ever even promote to people when that conversation comes up on the Facebook group every once in a while. And you'll notice, I just kind of like, not going to comment on that. <laughs> I don't yes, really want to see that even happen. Clear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause there that, is always, some, it's, it's unfortunate, but there's always someone that's willing to undercut, you know, and be like, Oh, I'll, I'll charge $200 for that quilt. And that just breaks right. my heart. Me too, me too, because then it's, um, yeah, they probably, that was materials maybe, you yeah. know, forget the time and every, and the love, that, yeah, yeah, oh, I don't know if I could sell a quilt for 200 No, no way. I would be happier giving it away for free than taking 200 Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So we talked a little bit about uh, being introverted and kind of the things that come along with that when we were emailing back and forth. And that's something that I am. Uh, I'm very introverted. In fact, actually, I don't think I've left the house in three days and I'm perfectly happy that way. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny when Josh and I got together, he was like, you're an introvert in denial. And what's worse is you're actually more of an introvert than I am. And Josh is like, I'm pretty proud of how introverted I am. You know? So yeah, I can, I can go for days without talking to somebody and be perfectly happy. So tell me about that and how that has shaped your life. And then now it's shaping your quilts and quilting. Okay. Um, I'm an introvert. I think I've always been an introvert, but just some family stuff um, kind of pushed me deeper, deeper, deeper back into my, my introvert self. And I am quite happy alone. Um, I have my kids, but I am quite happy without um, having, you know, dinners and coffees and party. I'm just, I'm okay with who I, you know, being alone with myself. I'm happy with who I am. Um, and when it when it was time to quilt, I went to the internet. Like I said, I didn't really realize that there was this whole thing happening outside in real life where people were meeting. Um, so for me, it was just a perfect fit. I mean, I could I could grow in this in this skill. I could get better and better and better at it. I could share online, um, and I never really had to leave my house. Um, but for me, it was you know learning to quilt and developing the skills very empowering. And you get, you do get to the point where even though you are an introvert and you're okay with yourself, you get to the point where you really itch to kind of show somebody in person. 
and have and see the reaction and hear the ooh and the ah in the room and and having that sense of community. So I did. Um, I got brave. I looked up a quilt guild. It ended up being quilt club, which I don't know the difference, but um, I got that experience where I walked in and I showed a quilt and it was the ooh and the ah and so um, on some for me. And I think what I brought to the table was, you know, hey, you guys have, you guys learned in person, you guys learned from books and from traveling teachers. Well, there's this thing called the internet, you know, these are older ladies, they don't do it. Um, And so I kind of, I kind of opened that door for them. And I hope that they can take that information that I shared with them, that I am an online learner, and it is possible to learn online anywhere in the world. And um, I hope they pass that on to the, I mean, maybe some younger quilters that don't have the time or the resources to go around and meet at specific times with specific teachers coming. And um, I think it's wonderful when we had, we've had a couple um, teachers, you know, come in and um, quilters come in and share their experience with us. I, that, I get that online. I get that online whenever I want. I just click the button. And, um, right? So... Yeah, I think you can be an introvert and you can be an awesome quilter and you can be an extrovert and go to all the meetings and be involved in all of that stuff. And um, yeah, but I think quilting got me out the door and it got me into the door of a club and a group of ladies. And um, I knew right away that we spoke the same language. They understood me, and I understood them. And so it took a lot of the pressure off of just walking into a random group of people that you have to find something in common with them. So for me, it was really neat because I could just listen and understand, and they could just listen and understand, and there wasn't a lot of explaining to do. Yeah, so just that was a really neat experience for me, and it got me out the door. <laughs> so wonderful. Yeah, and that's that was exactly my experience with the Quilting Guild when I first started. And, you know, connected me with those starting teachers that I needed. This was 2005, so YouTube was only getting started back then. So yeah. there really wasn't, yeah. you know, that that initial, uh, you know, just those first keywords and stuff. Like, I think Bonnie Hunter might have been online back in 2005, but that yeah. would have been probably it, you know. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> and, I, and I, I love that you were able to learn all the basics and create quilts you know, without kind of having um, too many conflicting opinions coming from very opinionated people in person, because <laughs> that can be overwhelming. Yeah, you're right. I, I didn't even think of that. You're right. Because once once I sort of got the basics and I started going around to different places and I got all of these rules and regu- and then I was like, I'm just really uncomfortable with that because I made an amazing quilt and there were not a lot of restrictions put on me. So I kind of, I gravitate back to you because <laughs> you give us permission to experiment and you give us permission to make mistakes and throw more thread at it. And I throw that advice around <laughs> because I think it's so valuable. You, It's okay. It's okay. You don't have to seam rip and seam rip and seam rip. And it, I think if I had learned from multiple teachers, I would have, I would have been confused and, um, I would have I would have felt like I really needed to get that seam ripper out more and go for perfection, and really it, I don't want perfection. I just want a quilt that's done, and I want it to be beautiful and great and put together well. And I think you can do that. And so, yeah, I, I'm glad I didn't I didn't have the benefit I guess of multiple attitudes and multiple ways of quilting. Exactly, <laughs> and it's it's so funny when I- you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, you you taught me that you don't have to buy every tool that comes on the market that you can use what you have and you don't have that rule you put some tape on it to make it the size you want and I liked that I don't want to have hordes and hordes and hordes of rulers I just want the basics like in the olden days when they didn't have all the extra fancy stuff and I don't want to store it I don't want to have I I don't want to have every inch of my space contaminated with, with things because this way it's basic it's the ruler, the rotary cutter and you know, and you. So yeah, so I don't know if that. 
No, I it totally what, makes I sense. I'm right now drowning <laughs> in so many tools, like downstairs. Like we have to spend whole days just to get the, like right now there's this giant pile downstairs that dad and I need to go through. And it's like, that's going to be an entire day sorting, sifting, trying to find a home for this stuff. And yeah, and it starts yes. to get in your way where it's like, I'm spending more time organizing my junk than I am actually making more stuff or making something new. And that's really frustrating. Exactly. So yeah, exactly. I think the minimum that you yeah. can get away with is a really, I mean, I'm a maximizer <laughs> saying that. <laughs> I'm like, oh, do I need another tripod? Let me go get one. You know, So I'm a maximizer, but I also appreciate and understand minimizing. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I do. I, 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 I've, I've bought tools and I've bought things that I thought, oh, this, this is gonna, this is going to make my quilt easier. But really, it's just more stuff. And I could have done it without it. And um, yeah, so if I can do it without it, I like that. I like that better. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being on the show, Jennifer. I've had such a fun time talking with you today. And this is the question I always ask everyone, as you probably know. You watch the podcast, too. So what is your, what are you most excited about? in the next five years. You're learning how to quilt. You're creating these affirmation quilts, which I cannot wait to see those. I really hope you'll send me some pictures for the show notes. Yes. Yes. So what are you most excited about coming up in the next five years? In the, in the next five years, I would love to teach children or um, adults. I would love to introduce them to what I know and, um, yeah, that, that to me sounds like the ultimate thing was to be able to bring, I've, I've had a couple of my daughter's friends in and I've taught them to make little things and I love that. I love introducing, and it's not that they're going to go on and become quilters, but just introducing somebody to something that they, it's not, it's not something that you see every day. You don't see sewing machines. You don't see people sewing every day. It's not an everyday thing. We're kind of more into uh, electronics now, right? And so to have someone come in and, and teach them just the basics of how something is put together. And I think it changes everything. I think it's a game changer to see, you know, you, you, I don't make garments, but I don't look the same at my garments as I did before I sewed. I appreciate the stitching. I appreciate good stitching. And now my daughter's picking up on it. And when we shop at the big box stores and she can see that the stitching isn't right, she's like, this is just not right. You know, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you appreciate the, you know, good workmanship. So that's where I want to be. I want to love to teach and spread the joy of sewing and quilting. That is wonderful. And, you know, I have to say, in my life, there were three women that really um, basically turned me into the creator that I am. So there was a woman at my church. Her name was Wendy. Still remember her. Don't know what happened to her, but she Aww. taught me origami. She taught me the basics of crafting. My grandmother, who taught me how to sew. And a family friend, Phyllis, who helped me create my prom dress. So just these small <laughs> things. Like, the, like these ladies might have stitched with me. My grandmother a little bit more so. But they might have stitched with me for maybe a few hours. And it changed my whole life. It's, so, a, it's, it's a game changer. It I really love is. that. I love that. Right, and it's just introducing them to different things that maybe they would not normally see. And maybe, you know, 20 years from now, they'll say, oh, I remember. I remember how a sewing machine works. I love that. I love that. That is so wonderful. Well, I wish you the best of luck with that. And I really hope you continue quilting and sharing and commenting. I love seeing you online every day. <laughs> Thank you so much, Leah. This is just my pleasure. So that's it for this episode. If you'd like to find more episodes of the Hello My Quilting Friends podcast, check it out at leahday.com slash podcast. We have a player that will play through all of the episodes shared so far so you can binge listen for hours on end. Until next time, let's go quilt. <laughs>